Marywood University senior Christian Budney has voted in every election since he was 18 years old. Christian, who became paralyzed as a result of a snowboarding accident when he was 17, uses a specially configured van that accommodates his wheelchair and the help of Angie, his mother and caregiver, to get to the poles. Why don't you park over here on the left? Over there, you see that? I think as an American, it's, you know, it's extremely important to vote. I mean, it's one of our, as I look at it, it's, it's a right as an American. And you, we just really, I mean, if there's so many people in our country that love to complain and stuff, and I'm one of them. And if, if I'm not going to vote, I think it's, you really don't have a right to complain. And, and you just, it, you have to express your democratic right as an American. Christian, who plans to be a social worker, said health insurance for people with disabilities is one of the issues that guided his vote. I really enjoy the idea that I could get insurance and somebody can't tell me, oh, well, you're already disabled. You can't get insurance. Uh, we're not going to cover you because you're disabled already. That's that's going to be illegal now under Affordable Care Act. That's uh, that you can't deny somebody for a pre-existing condition, which all disabled people have. Angie said she is particularly concerned about cutbacks in funding for those who care for people with disabilities. We're fortunate because I do live with Christian, but I think of uh, folks with disabilities like Christian who do not have a loved one there to take care of them and that's probably more than people who have people living with them. So if you have your hours cut back maybe from eight hours to six hours and you have no use, you're fully disabled, Who's going to help you? And I think this is one of the last places we should have funding taken away from. She said she is always hopeful that conditions for all people with disabilities will improve. Being a mother, especially that Chris is my son, um, it adds a whole different um, layer of, you know, difficulty because it is somebody you're, you love so much is the person with the disability. So these challenges make it even that much more challenging in a way, but we handle it. Again, our glass is always half full, not half empty, so. Angie and Christian say their neighborhood polling place at McNichols Plaza in Scranton is accessible. Inside, Christian said, some voting machines are placed on shorter tables to accommodate him in his wheelchair. I'm very grateful for how close it is to my house, the polling place, and that it's extreme, you know, it's pretty easy for me to get in. I could get in, and then once I'm in, there's a, a lower table because the higher spots to vote, I can't really reach at. But the lower tables makes it easy so I could, you know, I could have the ballot right next to me, fill out what I need, and uh, it's good. It is really easy here. We're, we're, again, very lucky. I'm sure there are some voting places that you have to get into in an elevator, maybe an old school where the elevator is going to be really tiny. We've come across that in other places we've been where only he could really fit into the elevator, which isn't, doesn't work since Chris has limited use of his hands. Um, so we have been lucky for that, but there have been a lot of challenges as far as accessibility and, and what some buildings think they can get away with. Nicholas Chestnut, judge of elections at McNichols Plaza, said he ensured that the voting process inside of his polling place was smooth for all voters. As far as uh, any like voting for like handicap or anything, that, that's also our responsibility to do. As okay. Well, to, to have that accessible, to have uh, the boots set up for people that, that don't have disabilities and also have people with the disabilities that can't walk or anything like that. They, they have the table to sit down as well, do it as well. But while the polling place is fully accessible inside, outside, that was not the case. There was no signage indicating handicap accessible parking near to the entrance. The only sign is many yards away at the entrance to the parking lot. Chestnut said while he had received training from the Lackawanna County Department of Elections about voting accommodations, he said he was not aware of building accessibility issues. As he spoke, a large SUV blocked the parking spaces closest to the door. So if I am handicapped and there's no place for me to park in this specific situation that's going on right now, what do I do? 
what you do is whoever is accompanying with the, with the handicap. Why? They, they can drive themselves. They can so drive say themselves. I'm driving myself. Say you're driving. I am driving myself. I am, I'm with no one. I have a handicap accessible car. I drive myself. But what I need is a clearly marked place close to the entrance that, you know, is open to me. And right now you've got this big truck and everything. So what would I do? Mr. Shed. Uh, in that situation, I could understand where it could be kind of inaccessible and impossible to kind of get out and vote. And that's something that we're going to have to change today, throughout the day. A lack of handicapped accessible parking, inaccessible building entrances, or other barriers to people with disabilities existed at every polling place we visited. At a polling place on South Mead and Moy Allen Streets in Wilkesbury, there were no curb cuts close to the building, which is a field house used by GAR High School. Judge of Elections Nikki Gordon said curb cuts are the responsibility of the city. This is GAR's bunkhouse, so we can't say, all right guys, you need to blast out that street and we have to wait for all of the paperwork to go through. Then that paperwork has to be met by whatever red tape is met. Right. It has to be crossed. Right. Then they have to come in and then they have to blow it out. So it essentially becomes a city issue. But she said it's also an issue that the training provided to judges by the Luzerne County Bureau of Elections did not address. Why is it that you folks don't have the kind of education and training you need in order to know that, gosh, you know, I should probably... Probably arrange. have one of these. Um, could you use it? Yeah, I could. I could have. There were a lot of things. I mean, we now mind you, we did get a lot of training on how to actually operate the poll. But all of the ancillary things like, hey, I have a woman who's coming in in not only is she in a wheelchair, but she's got cerebral palsy and she's in a multitasking chair. So I need to be able to get her into the voting poll, which I wouldn't even know if this would constitute the, the driveway that is connected to the field that they could <laughs> right, so take the driveway right here right. and bring her in. But even still, can I get, I'm needed in there? Okay, can okay. I get her there? Six District Democratic Chair Al Sabello, who was standing outside of the polling place, told us he believes the city will soon make accommodations by installing the curb cuts. And they're going to cut this. You know, the city will come in and get this taken care of. There's no problem with this. This is this is easy, and it's easy to get there. There's a big door over there. Open up the garage door. It's all on, wants all on to get ground in. level. Right. right. So, so if someone can get here from oh, yeah, the curb, yeah. it's nice and accessible. Oh, yeah. Easy. And it's, no it's problem. That'll be taken care of by next primary. But the work may not end there. Although the field house did have large garage style doors, the door in use had a threshold that noticeably protruded from the ground. It's just under two inches tall, just under two inches tall and it's made of concrete. So there's a bit of a step between the, the ground and what you'd need to do to get in there. So if you had a wheelchair, something around two inches might be a bit of a barrier. Well, this, this happens, and, and because uh, years passed, nobody ever made a complaint. Somebody like you didn't come in and say nothing. So we let it go, so let it slide. And this is not the only area. You can go probably go through the whole county, through the whole state of Pennsylvania, you'll see the same problem. Democratic State Representative Eddie Day Pashinsky greeted voters as they made their way into the polling place. He said all voters should be able to cast their ballots, and the core of the problem is that people are unaware of barriers to voting for people with disabilities. It's a matter of education. It's a matter of, of sitting down and, and working on a problem that uh, you're obviously pointing out and making sure, again, that everybody that's an American citizen has the right to vote. And if uh, handicap accessibility is an issue, it has to be addressed. At the other end of town, a polling place at Myers High School was accessible only by a wide concrete staircase. While we were there, a man slowly guided a woman up the stairs and into the building. There was no clearly marked accessible parking. There were, however, several accessible entrances on the side of the building deep into an alleyway. There are no handicapped parking signs, so I imagine if I pull in off the street, I would just have to leave my car here. If I'm in a wheelchair, there is absolutely no access to this polling place at all. Oh, and, and even if I wanted to get in, 
the doors are locked. So even if I knew without any signs to drive all the way back here between two very large buildings to park my car, I don't know where I would park, I guess just in the middle. Um, I would have to walk all the way down to, it looks like the third or fourth door on the side of the building and, and there are no signs um, except for this one where it says now finally handicap entrance and it does not have an automatic door opener so if I'm in a wheelchair I wouldn't be able to, to physically pull the handle and then gain access um, but it's locked anyway. The polling place at the Dallas Borough Building looked very much the same. Access was available through the front door, but reaching it required voters to climb, sometimes very gingerly, a narrow set of stairs. There is a driveway that leads to the rear of the building, but no public parking is permitted in the rear lot. The space is reserved for police vehicles only. There was no handicap accessible parking signage anywhere. Like the other judges, Linda McDermott said she received training about voting accommodations, but none of it addressed barriers to building access. In, in the big picture of things, maybe this is something that needs to be addressed with the, uh, the Board of Elections and the voter administration because uh, they send us tons of signage that we are obligated to put up, that we're obligated to take down and send back to them, but that certainly could be something that could be added to that. The story and the site was once again similar at the Dallas Township polling place, which is housed in a facilities garage to the rear of the Township Municipal Building. While the lot is flat and easy to navigate, there was no marked handicap parking. Judge of Elections George Keeble said the space is more convenient than a previous location in the Municipal Building. It's an issue I'll have to discuss with the county and uh, more likely the Township on, on moving some handicap accessible signage for the parking down to this this polling place. I, I would like to stay in this polling place because of the room in, that I have here and I can spread things out more than if I was in the old township building which is where the, if you go up there that's where the handicap parking signs are. In the are. very front yeah, of that they're, building. Yeah they're close right. to that building because that's um, normally as, as the township does business this is their garage where only their employees go. Right. So we only use this as a polling place for public when, when we have elections going on. But when they are going on, Americans, those who don't have disabilities and those who do, have the right to cast their ballots. But to do that, they have to first exercise another right, one quite literally hidden in plain sight. They have to get inside. It's time for us to reevaluate extended voting times, uh, make sure the polls are, are accessible to our disabled uh, folks, and make sure that everybody has that chance to vote. I mean, that is such an incredible right and responsibility. I am vocal. Um, that's why Chris is. <laughs> and how important it is to vote. All of our children feel that way, not like a lot of young people, but I think most of Chris's friends feel the same way, that it is important. Probably the most important thing is just that everybody realizes how lucky we are to vote and that we have to vote. You really, something that needs to be done. <laughs>